So here again, you know, it's going to take the turrets a while to kill these guys, but the nice thing about it is they will kill them, and I don't got to mess with them. It's kind of fun to watch, too. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Osiris New Dawn and the Discovery Update. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to do some work around the base to start with, and then after that, we'll see what happens. So I already got started, and I, get, I got to thinking, you know, I should probably just show you guys what I'm doing. Um, so let's see, where do we start? So the first thing that I've done is I've moved the Z-Shield over to the left a little bit so it no longer clips into um the uh the barracks so it just barely clears the barracks it still clips into the hydro uh, the hydrodome or the biodome rather but uh I don't, there's nothing i can really do about that because i can't move it back further uh you know back further to the east from where it currently is um you know plus it gives us all this area out here that we can park our vehicles and stuff later on now one of you guys told me in the comments a while back that you can build most of the crafting stations, in fact, I think it's everything except for the forge on top of these platforms before you close them in. So I got to thinking, hmm, that would allow us to take all of our, you know, all of our furnaces and our chem bench and our, and our printer and our workbenches and stuff and put them all up here in a nice little neat circle and have this be sort of kind of like a crafting room area, you know, slash area. And so what I started doing is I, I cleared all the, you know, the, the loot containers out of here and I repaired um, all of the uprights. And, um, you know, the Z shield does not protect you from windstorms. And I just, right before I started the recording, had a windstorm that came in, you know, caused a little damage, breached the, shoot, the suit, all that sort of thing. So what I figured what we could do is we could just put up the cheap cloth walls, you know, to protect against the storm. And as long as we don't cover the dome, it should still be considered outdoors and allow us to still set up those uh, those items. Um, so we're going to do that, and then I'm going to move all of the crafting stations, except for the forge up here. But what we could do with the forge is we could put the forge maybe right next to the Z shield right here, uh, so that we can still access it from the platform, which is kind of what you know you got one of you guys left me a comment and said you did something along those lines and that's kind of what prompted me to try this and then we we just get all of that uh, well what we could do with the you know i'm going to make the large depositories we're going to do away with most of the small guys except for maybe a few of them and so what we could do with the large depositories is we could set those right outside on the ground where we could get to them still from the platform and then and then what I'll do is I'll open up, on the other side of this wall I have a storage, and I'll just move that over to where the coupler is there, because we don't need this coupler here anymore, right? And then uh, fix up this hallway. We don't even really need to fix the hallway up, it just gives us a pathway out here to get to our stuff. Um, so, let's see, what else was I going to say? Um, well, yeah, I think, I think that's actually pretty much it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and farm up all the stuff that I need uh, to make the cloth walls, which isn't much. I mean, it's makeshift cloth bundle and alien fiber. Super, super easy. Get those walls in place and start moving stuff up here. And then um, at some point, I'll bring you guys back um, and show you uh, the progress that we're making. Or maybe just wait until it's completely set up before I bring you back. Um, and then the other thing I want to do uh, is I want to get gas tanks and I think I want to set those up um probably going to set those up in this area I might even end up moving the satellite dish I don't know we'll see uh, but I want to have one gas tank for each of the five types of gases and then I'm also going to set up some more liquid tanks um that we can use for hydrazine and fill those up with hydrazine and then you know those will automatically fuel our vehicles and so, yeah, we'll probably, I'll probably be doing that in this area over here. And then the, everything else out there will just be a nice wide open area that we can use, you know, to park, park our vehicles and so forth. So that's the plan. I'm going to get started on that. I'll bring you guys back with an update um, as we go along. 
All right, guys, I'm back with an update. Uh, just wanted to kind of show you where we're at so far. So um, I have cloth walls all around except for this spot here. Here I've got a couple of furnaces. I decided just to go with two furnaces uh, for now because I have more methane than I'm probably actually going to use for the rest of this playthrough. Uh, and, you know, if we need more furnaces down later for more methane, we can always do that too. So, But, but I have two furnaces here. I can reach through here, get to the forge as needed to make stuff. Uh, so that's done. All the rest of the walls uh, have a cloth covering, and as you can see, I've got the printer, the Kim station, the two workbenches with the exclusive upgrades, and then uh, three depositories. This depository is going to be for ores and alloys. This depository is going to be for parts. This one's going to be for containers with something in them, and I need to consolidate these later, but we'll do that when we get the tanks, uh, our tanks set up. Okay, um, I built this hallway. Uh, completely built it out, uh, put in a new coupler here so I could get to it, and um, I'm going to move all of this part stuff out to, in fact, can I, can I get it all right now? Uh, yeah, it looks like we can. Uh, so this is all going to go out here. I don't know if it's all going to fit, but if it doesn't, then some of these duplicate items will probably just store in some backup storage outside in... Um, you know, in, in a scrap container. I'm going to still keep a couple scrap containers around. But, um, yeah, okay, so if we do a default sort. Yeah, it's it's getting pretty darn full, but I mean, you know, this is... there. There's a lot of duplicates. So, like, all these LCD... Well, you know, stacks of LCD screens, stacks of cloth, um, all of these propellant tanks, that stuff. Uh, and look at these hoses, too. I mean, or not hoses, pipes. All that stuff I, I'm probably going to store outside in some uh, some of the little containers just as backup. Um, so, okay, so we got that done. And then, um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move the garden cooking types of items um, into this other container. But the more kind of... I, you know, the we'll say the like the hmm, I don't know how to pronounce it. We'll say the um, more exotic items, maybe. <laughs> uh, we'll put in there and just kind of distribute these across both um, containers, just because you know it's getting pretty full with everything that's in it at the moment. Okay, uh, so yeah, we'll we'll just kind of call this the produce container from you know from our bio uh, our biodome. And then this one can be for the other stuff. Now the water, um, I want to I want to put into the other. Yeah, we'll keep raw meat and stuff in here too. Uh, I want to put into this container here. And keep in mind too, this container, you know, we'll consolidate all this later, so it's not going to be quite as full as it currently is, because we have a lot of you know partially filled containers in here. Uh, but we still have several slots left in here, too. So lots of storage space in these depositories. They're amazing. All right, so that takes care of that part. Um, now, one of the things that I wanted to look at, and I wanted to do this on camera, it seems to me like they may might have changed things so that you get all the materials back when you disassemble something. I don't think it used to be that way, but and it might still not be. I haven't been able to confirm it, so I wanted to do that on camera and confirm it with you guys watching. Okay, so we have a depository here, and if we go into our utilities menu and select the depository, you can see that we have none of the required items uh, to make this, right? So if we take this apart, will we get everything back? Let's take a look and see. So dismantle. We do, look at that. In the upper left-hand corner, we have all of the parts back. So it appears, guys, that we get 100% of our stuff back when we disassemble something. It was looking to me like that was the case, but I couldn't tell because I had a whole bunch of other stuff in my inventory at the same time. That is amazing. Okay, I didn't know that myself. So we all learned something new today, or at least I learned something new today. Okay, let's uh, let's just test that again. So let's remove, um, in fact, let's get all of the ores and ingots out of these guys because we're gonna these are all gonna come down I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna keep some of them around but we're not gonna keep them out here so let's put all of this inside of the this depository I considered trying to put a roof on here after everything's in place and see if it still works but you know 
it's very handy for me to be able to just use the jetpack to get in and out of this building um, or even jump through here. So if we put the roof down, we wouldn't be able to do that. So we're going to just leave it open because, you know, we're protected from storms, so we're in good shape. I want to see if all of this is going to fit in here. It may not, in which case here again, we're going to have to do an overflow bin. Uh, there's like, I think there's like 60 slots in these guys. Let's do a default sort here. Yeah, that's cool that we get everything back. Um, very, very cool. Because, I mean... You know, we're starting to kind of see, I think, a trend in survival games. Um, you know, Valheim does it, for example. Satisfactory does it, even though Satisfactory is not strictly a survival game. But, you know, you get everything back that you put into it. And I think we as players want that. So, you know, I, I hope that, uh, you know, that all video games move in that direction, we'll say. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's do a default sort here. And... Actually, it'll tell us right here. So 58 out of 60. Well, <laughs> we have like two slots left in there. Um, okay. So let's see. I had a couple parts here. So let's put this stuff in here. Uh, that can go in there too. So what's this at? This is 54 out of 60. Okay. So we're not completely at capacity. We're close. But the other, you know, the good news is we have a representation of just about everything in there already. So they're pretty much as full as they can be, which is good. Uh, all right, so now let's let's just do another test here on these empty ones. So if I was to make a if I was to make another scrap metal chest, I would need um, scrap metal, scrap hinge, and makeshift patch tape. Let's get rid of the makeshift patch tape. We're gonna put that in here. So we don't have anything at all in our inventory that that requires. Ouch. Okay, so in the upper left-hand corner, uh, it says scrap metal chest. We need two scrap metal, one hinge, and one makeshift patch tape. So let's take one of these apart and see if we get everything back. Boom, we do. Oh, man, that is a beautiful thing. Bravo, devs, bravo. Okay, so guys, it appears that we get everything back now when we dismantle. And it might have been that way for a while, but it was. I don't believe it was that way in the last stable release. And then I just assumed since that point that it was always that way, but it, that is not the case. So very happy about that change. Okay, um, so I just need to get the rest of the stuff out of here. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to do some um, some overflow, uh, which is fine. We can do that. And um, oh, so what? The other thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put you know all of the the gas tanks and liquid tanks over in this area. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to put a, a depository here. Um, so yeah, let's go get the stuff we need for that. Okay, so we're going to need, uh, what is it again? We're going to need nickel, straight up nickel, which is right there. Uh, we're going to need a gunmetal, which I think I have at least one of those. Yep, okay, so we got the gunmetal. Uh, two steels, a rubber, and an LCD screen. So those are going to be over here. We could probably keep the steel uh, with the ores, too, and maybe this, just to save some space in here, because this is getting really full. Uh, okay, so what did I say? Two steel, oh, and an LCD screen, uh, which we have right here. Okay, we got everything? Oh, we need a rubber. Okay. Turn our light on so we can see what's going on. So I think what we'll do is we'll put the depository right here. And we'll turn it this way and then hold down shift and kind of line it up. Like so. I think that's about right there okay and then we'll just pop it down here and what this guy's job is is to hold all of our empties which makes sense because we're gonna have all of our tanks over here so any empty containers whether they be barrels or jars uh, will go in uh, this depository here okay cool 
All right, so what, now, what I have left to do now is just transfer all of this stuff um, out of all of these chests. Like, here's a bunch of empties here, for example. In fact, I think, I think damn near all of these are empties. Let's just grab them. Um, oh, we got more ores in there that I have to transfer. So anyway, I'm going to move all the stuff out of here, take all of these scrap chests down, and then I'm going to set, reset some scrap chests up, I don't know, maybe along here. Yeah, it might make sense to do it along here, and and that then these other scrap chests are just going to be for backup, you know, a surplus um, product basically. Um, then when I'm finished with that, I'm going to get started with building the tanks. So we're going to take, and we're going to make one tank, one of these large gas tanks for each type of gas in the game. And there's five types of gas, I think. There's hydrogen, nitrogen, chlorine, fluorine, and hydrogen and oxygen right so so we'll make five tanks for each type of gas and then I'm probably gonna make multiple liquid tanks that we're gonna use for uh, uh, hydrazine I don't think I'm gonna keep storing water in this tank we just don't need to because I mean we already have 15,000 or I'm sorry 1500 units of water stored right or no 5,000 sorry yeah, 5,000 units of water right in the reclaimer, which we can extract if we need it for something. So there's just no point in um, having that water tank out there. With one exception, and that would be that it's still useful to have one just to consolidate, um, you know, partials. But, I mean, we have so much water that I don't even know if I'll bother with, e with even doing that anymore, really. Because it's just not really needed. But I'll, I'll figure that out. And anyway, so probably won't bring it back until I have all the tanks and everything set up over here and then we'll go from there okay so I'll see you in a bit all right guys we are back uh with an update so um ah dock on storm just came through but as you can see we are behind cover so the only time we might have a problem is if the storm's actually coming from this direction uh and if it does you know it does not a big deal okay so i've got all the tanks um in place so what we're going to do um, is we're going to grab fuel types of items and gas items. Uh, so we want this and this. All of this nitrogen can come. And I think I'm going to leave the water in there. Okay. And then we're going to go out here. And so this is what I have set up. So I've got four gas tanks in the back there and two more in the front. And so these two here are going to be hydrogen. Um, and this is going to be nitrogen. And then the other three will be oxygen, fluorine, and chlorine. And then we've got three liquid tanks here. And so one of these liquid tanks is going to be m for methane. And then the other two will be for hydrazine. And again, I I'm not going to mess with water anymore uh, in terms of putting it in a large tank because we just don't need to, to do that um you know and if we need to consolidate water i'll use it for cooking drink it dump it out it doesn't matter because we got we got tons and tons of water um so two of these will be filled up for hydrazine and i and and then that way you know any of our vehicles that require fueling will automatically fuel up once we have the hydrazine uh, in the tank uh, which is kind of neat um so let's go ahead and go Let's make this one the... Um, actually, we're vulnerable out here, aren't we? Um, let's get our weapons out here for a second, just in case Mr. Krabs or somebody else decides to come by and bite us in the butt. Is he... Uh, what's he doing? He's dying. That's what he's doing. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is... Put the, let's step back into the bubble for just a second. Oh, we do have another Mr. Krabs. One shot and you dead. All right, let's reload this guy. This thing's a beast. All right, we're going to put all of the methane on our toolbar and load it up into this third tank, and that'll be our methane tank. And I'll... I, I'd be very surprised if we actually use all of this methane, you know, what, uh, during the rest of this playthrough. I just don't think that's going to happen, but it might. We'll see. So we'll fill this guy up. 
it's just weird that you have to be right at this spot to fill it up. You'd think we could do it from here, which would make working with these a lot easier, but that's not the way it works. So, okay, we have a couple more methanes, and we have one small thing of hydrazine. And we're going to grab whatever hydrazine we have out of the rover, too. Um, well, am I going to do that? I don't know. I might... We, it probably would be a good idea to keep some some spare hydrazine uh, in there just in case we're out out and about and we run out of fuel and we're not you know near our thing here uh, so we'll put this hydrazine in here there we go okay now let's go ahead and grab our we got a fluorine here we got a chlorine here and then we got a bunch of nitrogens um, actually we should probably convert no let's let's fill the gas tanks up first I was gonna say we could probably convert those to hydrazine right now but so fluorine's the one we're gonna use the least uh, so we'll put the fluorine in this one here and see now it tells us that we have fluorine in here which is useful we'll put the chlorine in this one Okay, and then we're going to put the nitrogen in this one here because nitrogen is going to be our second most used uh, gas. So we want it in the tank where it's the easiest to get to. And we got a couple more nitrogens here. I think that's it for all of those. Okay, so we got some nitrogen in here, and then this will be oxygen, because we actually don't use much oxygen. This has 52% hydrogen in it, and this will also be filled with hydrogen. And I'll do all that stuff off camera, of course. I'm just going to load up the spaceship uh, and fly around to the different um, uh, gas, you know, gas vents and get all the stuff. Okay, let's grab this. Now, is this guy... Okay, so... Because this guy's not completely full, if you look at the little blue bar there, as soon as we get within range, it's going to suck the tiny bit of hydrogen that's already out, or I'm sorry, hydrazine that's already out of the... Oh, we got more stuff in here, too. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep these in here as, as backup fuel. Uh, the rest of this stuff, though, we're going to we're gonna take out. So, yeah, let's board the vehicle and drive it up here. And it should be said incorrect fuel type, but it should have taken out whatever was in here. Yeah, see, there's no more hydrazine left in there because I just had a tiny bit in there. So it automatically took it out, which is really cool, which is really cool. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's get in the rover again for a second. And... We have a lot of space here, so we're going to... Let's just keep the rover parked over here for now. It should, should work. It's a little squirrely. Okay, we can park it there. Now, uh, we, we, we do have some more vehicles to make, but they're going to spawn right out about in this area. So we just don't want to park anything out here for now until we get everything made that we want to make. Very good. Uh, Mr. Krabs, we can grab you. And let's park you here next to the rover. Okay. Place for everything, everything in its place. And we still have uh, the Grand Assault vehicle. We have the hover bike and the mech. Those are the other three vehicles to make. And then there's also some bots that we might play around with. I don't know. The bots don't really work very well. Um, so they're supposed to be improving them. But uh, in this release, uh, from all the feedback I've gotten from you guys, they don't really work very well. But we might, you know, make them just so you can kind of see them for those of you who are still you know, new to the game. So, all right, let's put uh, our weapons back here. And our patch tape and our first aid kits can go there. Now, for the, for the water that we currently have, I think what I'm going to do is... We do need it for cooking, right? So I think what we'll do is we'll just keep 
those. Oh, you know what we could do? We could actually consolidate. See, these are all full. That's a full. Yeah, let's let's actually consolidate what we have since we have an empty tank that we can use. But ultimately, this tank's gonna, these two tanks are going to be for hydrazine. So we'll just put these guys down here. Okay, so um, add, 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 and then extract, extract. Okay, so that way we've consolidated the water. Good. All right, now these guys, all the empties, are going to go in here. Hopefully I have room for all of them. Yeah, we're, we're, getting, we're getting out of space in here. Um, but we're going to load up. We need to take, excuse me, we need to take barrels with us, not water jars, uh, for getting gas. And these water jars I'm going to put in the, in the food container. So let's load up our spaceship. I'm going to use a spaceship because, you know, it takes a long time to land, but it's still really the best way to get around. And it's got it. Um, much more storage space, quite a bit more storage space than the rover does anyway. Uh, no, that doesn't. Oh, wait. Yeah, that stays in there all the time. Okay, so default sort. Uh, that's our spare O2. So yeah, I'm going to load the spaceship up with barrels and load my own inventory up with barrels and then just go around and collect uh, the gases that we need to... Uh, fill up all of our tanks. Uh, now, as far as the other work that I did off camera, uh, as you can see, I, I moved all of the, or most of the scrap chests over here and kind of lined them up neatly around the, you know, the edge of the biodome there, or the habitat. And then, you know, everything that's out here is pretty much just duplicates. Um, you know, spare, spares um, stuff that we have. Like, we got a ton of duplicate broken barrels and that sort of thing. Um, this is basically just kind of like biomaterial um, that I'm just, you know, decided to keep out here. Anything that's not, you know, that we're not going to use, like, for example, for cooking. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then what do we have here? Yeah, these are just extra duplicate part items that we have a bunch of. And I got, I got a few duplicate ores out here, too. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to do. So I'm going to go get the gas and fill up all of our gas tanks and fill up all of our hydrazine tanks um and then we're gonna we're gonna be in a really good place in the base i'm, I'm pretty pleased with how everything has come uh, together here all right guys we're back and uh, just about finished with filling up all of our tanks so I, was, I need to make uh, three more hydrazine and then our tanks will be completely full outside and uh, we'll be in good shape with our gases and our liquids so let's take the rest of the uh, filled or partially filled, excuse me, um, gas cans and put them in here. And everything else we have, I think, is an empty. Okay. Let's head on outside. So we've got... Um, this guy's 90% full of methane and then as the, the, the distilleries... Uh, fill up. I'll get this topped off. Uh, this one's 100% hydrazine. I, I went and filled up the rover completely too. And then this one uh, just needs three more. Now, I don't know that I, I don't think I talked about this specifically, and you guys may have already noticed this anyways, but uh, for filling liquid tanks, it takes, uh, you fill it 10% per 100 units or per jar, right? So I'm 70%. Hold on a second. We have to deal with somebody here. Um, I'm also, we're going to also, we're going to set up some turrets because, you know, it's very easy for me to kill these guys, but the turrets are going to just kind of handle it automatically so I don't have to mess with them. And they, you know, they're still just a pain in the butt, at least when I'm working over here because they can reach through the shield and nip me in the butt like you just saw there. All right, let's uh, take one of these and then, yeah, so... So when you fill a liquid tank, it takes, uh, or one jar or a hundred units will fill 10%. Okay. So let's, um, tank is full. Oh, we're on the wrong tank. 
Okay. And when you fill a gas tank, the uh, it's 7% per barrel. Okay, so if we go in here and we pull this barrel out, if I extract uh, this fluorine from here, or yeah, fluorine, see how it leaves 93% left? And then, of course, if we put it back in, um, it'll put 7% in and fill it up, which means that you need 14 full barrels of gas to fill one large gas tank. Okay, so you need 10 full liquid jars to fill a liquid tank and you need 14 full gas drums or barrels to fill a gas tank okay all of our tanks are full so we've got a hundred percent fluorine there we've got a hundred percent chlorine in this one we have 100 percent o2 in that one this one is a hundred percent hydrogen this one is a hundred percent hydrogen and this one is a hundred percent nitrogen so we are full up on the tanks, which is a nice feeling to have. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so we're in pretty good shape with that. And all of our organization is done. So I'm feeling really good about that. So let's put our empties back in here. And then we're going to... I think what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at some custom building pieces for the specific purpose... Of building ourselves a landing pad for our ship and what I think I want to do is um, I guess I could just drag these right into here uh, what I think I want to do with that is I want to that's a hundred percent full my goodness okay we'll just put these extra two jars in here uh, I think I want to put it up on the lab because you because as you can see you know I land I was able to land the ship itself on the lab because there's just not really a good spot around here for for us to land the ship. Um, so I want to make a landing pad and I want to put it um, up on the habitat if we can. Or not the habitat, I'm sorry, the lab. And then, you know, we have plenty of uh, hover power to get up there. I just got to clear the, the ridge here. But we could also maybe look at potentially making a uh, like a ladder or a stairway or something up there too i mean that would be a better way to handle that so let's just move the ship kind of out of the way for the moment but yeah i just don't have a really good flat area to land the ship not an ideal area i guess i should say here and we're going to need the area inside the dome to park all of our vehicles and then once i get the ship kind of off the ground and out of the way you know then we're going to then I think we're going to set some turrets up just for pest control more than necessity, if that makes sense. Now, the turrets are kind of weak sauce. But it takes a lot of shots. And we could maybe make a couple of sec droids, too, uh, in between the sec droids and the security uh, turret, or the turrets, rather. Um, you know, we shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Not, not that I'm worrying about it, but, you know, it'll clear, clear the trash farts is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so... Um, to get into uh, custom building, what we want to do is go into F2 and click the custom tab, and then you have all of these, you know, walls and floors and ceilings and things that you can build. Which I don't, I don't really mess with these a whole lot, but you know, this could be a good opportunity for us to to build a landing pad. So what I want to do is, I think everything here takes one piece. Well, except for the lights, but it, all of this is just one piece of steel. Um, so yeah, let's go grab some steel or make it if we need to. So the steel is going to be in here. I've got 13 pieces of steel. That's probably enough, but let's just, um, let's make like 20 pieces of steel. So we're going to grab some carbon and some iron and go over to our forge here. And how many pieces did I grab again? 13, so we'll make seven more. Okay. Get that stuff back in there. All right, so hopefully... Hmm, I just thought of something, though. I want, it's probably not going to let me put... It's probably not going to let me put a floor on the top of this. I'll bet you it's not. Well, let's just go up and try it. 
If this was just a little bit wider, I mean, we'd just use it as is, but it's not. All right, um, so let's go to custom, and we want to choose a flooring, and it doesn't really matter which one we use. I guess this one would be as good as any. Yeah, shoot, it's not going to let us put it up there, up here. Hmm. I wonder if we could... I wonder if we could build walls. What about a ceiling? Yeah, so the ceiling needs... I think the ceiling has to attach to a wall, so... All right, so here's, an, here's something we could try. If we go to... Uh, let's grab a wall. We could we could maybe use if we can't get this to work on top of the lab, we could maybe set some pillars up and just you know do it away from the lab. But let's try something else. Let's grab a wall. And again, I don't really care what the wall looks like, so we'll just grab this first one. Now, if we can get this high enough, we might be able to then put a ceiling across it to make essentially make a landing pad going across to here. Uh, man, do I want to do that, though? That's going to take a lot of steel to get it all the way up here and all the way across. We might be further ahead just to build something down below. Now, I'm thinking maybe that's what we should do. Okay. I mean, I you know, I, I've got the resources to make the steel, but I don't want to... I don't want to sp spend that much steel, you know? Um... Monsters are coming in. Okay. Anybody else? All right. So, yeah. Why don't we... Why don't we decide where to do it? I don't want the ship to be in front of the dome because that's where the monsters are going to be. So we need room for the turrets to be able to fire, right? Um, on the other hand, we want the ship to be fairly close to the base because we're going to be offloading it when we bring in supplies and that kind of thing. This is, this isn't actually a bad spot over here. This is fairly flat over here. Okay, so here, yeah, let's, let's work with this. So, um, let's look at the pillars here for a second. Oh, rats. That's right. We've got to be within a certain range of the laboratory to use these. Oh, we don't, though, because... Oh, that's right, because that's broken. <laughs> I'm, you know, I don't usually take advantage of exploits, but having to be within 50 meters of the lab, I think, is a stupid-ass requirement. And why the lab anyways, right? I think the only reason they do that is because they're basically gating custom building behind the last building you need to make, which is the lab. And that's a stupid reason to do it. It really is. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, I like to do things legit, especially because this is a tutorial series. But honestly, what I would probably do if I, if I didn't have a choice... So I'd probably actually move the lab over here so that I could build over here because this is a, a good spot for us to build a landing pad. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to use um, old old guy's uh, old guy's prerogative here, we'll call it, <laughs> and I'm going to fudge a little bit and build the the landing platform over here, mostly because I don't agree with that prerequisite that the game has. Um, or, you know, at the very least, if, okay, so if you want to gate the custom building behind the, the final building in the game, I don't have a, I don't really have a big problem with that, but gosh dang it, man, don't make it within 50 meters. That's just ridiculous. It's too close. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. I'm going to cheat. If you guys don't like it, I'm sorry, but I'm going to do it anyways. Uh, if I had to do this legit, though, I would be going over there, tearing the lab down, and moving it over here somewhere within 50 meters so that I could build my landing pad here. So that's how you would actually handle it legit. Okay, so enough said. 
let's get off the soapbox and let's build. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to uh, F2 to custom and I want to look at the pillars. This is kind of hard though because it's a little bit hard to see what we're working with here. But So we got industrial pillar. They all cost the same so it's really just an aesthetic thing. Um, so we're, you know, we're just going to go with the first one. Okay, so how high off the ground is that? That's okay. That's not super high off the ground. The thing is, though, is if we use this, um, you know, it's going to follow the contour of the ground there. So I wonder if that's going to cause us any difficulty later on. I don't know. Let's let's just do this. Let's put. I'm just trying to do a little bit of eyeballing here. Okay, let's put this pillar right about here. Okay, now can we go into here? and attach a ceiling piece to that. So let's see, floors, 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 paneled floor, 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 ceiling, armored ceiling. So we're just gonna go with the first one because I can't see what the hell it looks like anyways. So is it gonna let us attach that to the pillar? Why is it letting me put a ceiling on the ground? Okay, so maybe we have to use walls to get the ceilings to work. It, it is snapping to this, but it's... Why isn't it snapping up above, though? Hmm. Okay, my guess is we have to use walls instead of pillars. Okay, well, if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. So let's get... Um, let me actually get my toolbar back in uh, order here. Okay, so let's take this back down. So this little droid thing's going to be in the way, unless we can build just a little bit past it. Because the idea is I want to build the pad, but then have a stairwell that goes right down into the dome for us to, you know, for us to use when we land. So let's go to F2 Custom. Uh, we want to go with walls. So we'll just start with the first one, industrial wall. Okay, so we want this to be facing due south, which it is. And we want to make sure that it clears this robot, because see, that's going to block it otherwise. And it also has to clear this. So probably, let's start with right here. Nope, wrong button. Okay, now, can we escape? Oh, I'm hitting the wrong button. I couldn't figure out why I wasn't escaping. Okay, now, let's find the first ceiling. They're, like, way the hell down here. Okay, paneled ceiling one. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. So now, can we... Ooh, look at this. We don't... This means we don't need to put walls all the way around. We just need to have it... I mean, theoretically, we'd have it just one of them and be... You can call it good, but... What I would probably do is is at least put the walls in the corners so they're kind of like acting as a support, you know? Um, let's go all the way out to here. Okay, now what I want to do here is I want to go into the custom menu and let's find the stairs. Here, if we go closer to the laboratory, we can actually see the pictures. Yeah, see, that's just a stupid requirement. It's a stupid requirement in general, but if you if you have to do it that way, at least extend the range. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I, I said I was going to get off my stope, um, my stope box. Yeah, my stope box, my soap box. Okay, um, I'm thinking wide stairs. Yeah, definitely wide stairs. Okay. 
And so what we're going to do with these guys is... Right mouse flip. Yeah, okay. And... Let's put it, put it there. Yeah, I might, I might move the stairs. What? Okay, so what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to finish building out the landing pad. It's going to clip into the ground right here, though, so I might end up... Uh, here comes the lag. I might end up taking this one out, but then extending it further this way. Cause, oh, yeah, we have a lot of room to go this way. Um... Okay, well, yeah, we, again, we don't need to build an entire wall all the way around. So, anyway, I'm going to build out this pad. It's going to generally cover this whole area here-ish. And then when I'm done with that, um, I'll bring you back. We're going to set up a couple of turrets, and then I think we're going to have to wrap up this episode. Okay, so I'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, I'm back and just about finished here. So let's go back into the menu. Uh, I'm looking for industrial floor two, I believe. And so the way I've set this up here, oh no, that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, hold on a sec. Does it tell me what this is? Oh, panel floor one. Okay, yeah, pa uh, wait, panel floor two. Oh, right. Okay, I want, actually, these need to be paneled floor, too. So, here, let's take these back up. Yeah, that's paneled, well, hold on a sec, paneled floor, two. I think I want actual paneled floor, one. So, those are correct. This is not. So, let's take these back up. and uh, replace them with uh, all panel floor one. But the idea is I wanted kind of like a white outline uh, in the center of the landing pad, um, you know, so that we could see uh, or kind of have a, a spot to aim for, if that makes sense. Um, so let's go back in here, custom. All right, we wanted paneled floor uh, one. Okay. So let's get these in. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And then we're just going to put the little corner pieces in to simulate, you know, like pillar supports, even though we don't have to do that, but we'll do it just for aesthetic and practical reasons. And then we'll test it out with our ship. Now, I might also put, for lack of a better description, um, like a almost like a backstop on this. And because the ship is... You know, it's it's really difficult to control, ex or precisely control where you land with it. Um. What I'm here. Let's finish the walls first, and then we'll we'll worry about that. So, we're gonna go uh, escape F2 custom. Uh, we're just using industrial wall one here, so we want this to snap there. Use the right mouse button button to flip it the other way. Okay. And this side... I mean, this side's already actually touching the ground, but we'll... Yeah, if, it, if it'll let me flip it, let's just do it so it looks right. No, 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 no. Flip there. You better not attack me, Minotaur. Here he comes. I need to make some more ammo for the assault rifle. Okay, now, um, that looks pretty good. I think what I want to do is, I, I moved the stairwell all the way to the edge here, because I thought that was the best position for it. And, I mean, technically we don't, whoa, lag. We, technically we don't really need a stairway in the back just because, you know, if we need to get here, we can walk up that way or we can jump. Plus, 
I don't think monsters can walk up stairways, but if they can, we obviously don't want them coming up here. So the idea now behind this whole backdrop idea is I only have one piece of steel left, so let's see. Let's let me go make let's go make a little bit more steel first. So we're just gonna grab some carbon and iron. And I wanna make uh, four more, I think four more pieces of steel here. Put that away whilst we're waiting here. Yeah, I'm really liking uh, really liking my base setup here. It's coming together very nicely. Okay, so what we're going to do here is actually I need to actually look at the the uh, the uh, things, the pieces. Yeah, so we have to be close to here. Okay, so um industrial windowed wall, paneled wall. Uh I think it just industrial wall is good enough for what I have in mind. Ooh. There's a door. That's kind of cool. Yeah, there's a wall with the door in it. Neat. Um, yeah, for what I have in mind, let's just go with the industrial wall. But I want to put like um, like a little backstop, so to speak. And I'll show you why. If it's not already obvious to you, I'll show you why. Okay, so let's um, build these across here. Just because I'm actually curious, you know, as to how it looks, I just want to see what that wall looks like with the door. So we'll make one more piece of steel here. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to actually use it, but I want to see what it looks like. Okay, so it was wall, uh, door. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. It opens up automatically, so... I like that. I like that. Um... The only thing I don't like is that now the other walls don't match, but we can fix that. We can fix that quickly. So let's get our spanner out. And we'll take these apart and then figure out which is the matching wall. I mean, we could even wall the whole entire thing in just to protect it from monsters but honestly I'm not really too worried about that okay so let's go over here so we can see the parts pieces parts pieces so the wall uses uh, the wall door uses this design um, which doesn't exactly match any of the other ones from what I can see here it doesn't match any of the other ones at all Hmm. That's weird. You'd think they would make a pattern that would fit with that. Well, okay, we could... This is sort of kind of like that. And it's got the window see-through. Not that that matters either way. I guess this would be the closest one to this, but it doesn't... Even it doesn't really match, you know? Um... Either this one or this one. Let, let's go with this one. Let's go with the tech window wall four. Okay. All right. So we want tech window wall four. This one here. Oh, that requires rubber and glass. Uh, okay. This one 
This one doesn't. Let's just go with this one. Okay. Nope. Hey! What the hell, man? Well, that's a fine how'd you do. Can he get out of there? Okay, I don't have any more ammo left for that one. Okay. Good. I'm glad he got out of there. That would have caused us some, some heartache there. All right. Let's redo this. Okay, so we were doing tech, I don't know, which wall were we doing? This one. There. Yeah, somehow or another, it, well, it's because of the stupid lag. It flipped around the other direction. And then the beetle came in and totally threw off my groove. Okay, so, not, not perfect, but it'll work. I'm glad that door's automatic, though. Okay, so now, let's see if we can make this work without the lag completely killing me. So what we're going to have to do to approach our landing zone is we're going to come out this way. Okay, and let's bank back to the south. Oh, we're closer than I thought we were. <laughs> okay, let me try that again. I it's it's really hard to see because you know everything's so foggy and hazy. Okay, so let's slow down. Nice thing about having a dome, too, is it makes it a lot easier to spot your base. Okay, I'm going to slow down a little more. We need to kind of come in this way and then bank this way. Slow down a little more. But the idea here is that we're going to kind of just nose dive right there and then pop up in the air. Okay, I think I, I'm too far forward though. Yeah. Okay. So let's get back up. All right. Did our nose clear? Yep, it did. Okay. So I don't know. You know, I don't know if this backdrop is more trouble than it's worth to be honest with you um but yeah i mean I, that worked out reasonably well i guess it took me a couple of tries to get it right but <laughs> look at the landing gear <laughs> oops um yeah the landing gears are a little bit jacked up aren't they anyway um yeah i mean it works it works and it gives us a you know a nice flat area to land and yeah okay so last thing we're going to do in this episode before we wrap it up is we're going to make some turrets because I am really getting irritated with these damn bugs. Super irritated with them. Let's turn this off. Um, and, uh, okay, yeah, let's go into our new crafting area. I'm still trying to get used to the, the new layout of the base, but I really like the layout. So for turrets, defenses, we're, we're just, we're not messing around with these other ones. We're going right to the good one. Um, so we're going to need zirconiums, batteries, 
titaniums, gunmetals, all that kind of stuff that you see on the screen. So I'm thinking, let's make a couple of these. We'll, we'll make two. And we might also... We might also make a couple sec droids too. Let's go look and see what those require. So Osiris security unit. Okay, so that's the those are the material. Oh shit, we gotta make an assault rifle for those. Oh well, I guess it makes sense. Anyway, yeah, those are the materials that the Osiris security unit uses or needs rather. <clears throat> so I'm gonna make two turrets, two security units, and then uh, when they're ready to go, I'll bring you back. We'll set them up and watch them blast the monsters, and then we'll wrap up the episode. Okay, be right back. All right, guys, we are back. Um, before I forget, before I forget, um, I wanted to point out, I know this is completely off topic from what we've been doing, but I wanted to point out uh, the discovery menu because we didn't look at this when we did the discovery episode. One of you guys pointed this out to me uh, in the comments. So um, this is really cool because you know, not only does it show you what you've discovered and where you've discovered it, because remember, there's going to be some things on the other moons that we'll have to discover too. But what's really cool is it tells you what type of material you will get from it based upon the tool that you use. And um, so, yeah, really useful information. And I think it looks like if we have the star, that means we've discovered every possible type of material that you can get from it. But in the case of the blue blades, we never I've never used a blunt object or a slash tool on that or the horse bract. Uh, so we have still still more things that we can discover, which is really super useful. Um, I, I knew this menu was here, but I never really paid that much attention to it. So uh, thank you very much to whoever the individual was that pointed this out in the comments. I'm sorry, I don't remember who you who you were at the moment, but uh, really, <clears throat> excuse me, appreciate that. So super useful for discovery purposes. Okay, let's get back to business here. Now, I decided just to make two turrets and one sec droid because there, it, it's just so expensive. And it, all that stuff requires gunmetal. Uh, straight up gunmetal and gunmetal to make the other parts that it requires and you know gunmetal using tin has brought my tin supply down a little bit low like 18 left and that is all we have for the entire rest of the game all right so um <clears throat> uh i i didn't want to make another security bot the other thing is too is the security bots tend to kind of wander off so i didn't want to s spend precious resources on two bots and then have them both wander off kind of thing um, so let's go ahead and let's actually make the the bot first and see uh, see how he does. Now they're not, you know, they don't. Um, I don't think those guys will come in here. They don't really do a lot of damage, but they're kind of cool though. Um, so do we have everything? Yeah, we do. Okay, so here we go. There he is. All right, let's see. See, he's already shooting at it, but he's, his AI is a little bit dumb because he doesn't know to sh not to shoot through the thing, but at least he's going after them now, and so that way the monsters completely ignore him and they still come for me though, which is kind of funny too. He'll eventually kill him, but like I said, he takes a lot of shots, but I mean, you know, it doesn't cost us anything ammo-wise. I wonder, if, I wonder too if they have... Um, uh, buffed th the damage these guys do a little bit. Yeah, he finally killed him. Okay, so with the bot, um, I'm like super encumbered. Actually, you know what? Let's let's get the turrets built first, and then we'll take a closer look at the bot. So, I basically want turret coverage kind of all along this front area here. All right, so let's go to defenses, and we'll get our first anti-personnel turret. And I don't know if there's a like a limit to how far away from the base we can put them. But if we put a turret up here, he's going to have coverage kind of that direction and that direction. I'm almost wondering, too, if I would want to maybe... Put almost like a foundation around uh, on it so it's flat but or you know what we could do we could put it up on a pillar yeah that could be cool do I have any steel in my inventory 
I do not have any steel in my inventory. Okay. Let's go make some steel really quick. So if we could actually put it up on a on a pillar, that would be ideal. If it'll let us do that. I'm like super slow here. Let's eat a, a crab stew. Nutritional balance achieved. Okay, so I don't know. I can't remember what the range is. I wish, man, I wish that damn rock wasn't there because it's like going to be right in the way. If these guys have decent range, though, we could put one here to cover all the way to the platform and through there and then another one up on this hill. Uh, I just don't remember what kind of range they have. So let's let's go into here and go to custom and we want to go all the way to the pillars and doesn't matter which one we use let's just use industrial pillar one and if we put this let's try it right here okay can we get this on on top of here ah no that's right, it only, you can only put it on the ground. Duck on it. That doesn't, it would have been perfect to put it up there. Yeah, you can only put these on the ground. I forgot about that. Okay, well, it was worth a try. Okay, so if we put this pillar here, it should be able to shoot that way and that way. And give us coverage as long as it has enough range. Okay, so let's just point it kind of more this way and set it down okay and then let's put another one here to kind of cover there and there I'm not sure what the rotation on these is either I can't remember so let's just put this here Maybe upright. Now let's get it down here where it's a little flatter. Okay. So, um, what we want to do now? Let me let me drop some stuff off, and then what we'll probably do is leave the area and then come back to spawn in some monsters and just see how the turrets do. Oh, yeah, we got to check up on our our bot too. So let's put our stuff away here. Yeah, that stuff was expensive to make. Oh my goodness. Very expensive. I had to make two assault rifles. Well, no, I had to make one assault rifle to make then the droid, which again makes sense. I totally get it, but yeah, expensive stuff. Expensive stuff. But I mean, we're still we're still pretty good overall on our ore supply. It's just the tin that I'm I'm a bit concerned about. You don't have a ton of that. I had to make some more plastic too. Um, okay, so let's go I keep getting caught on the thing there Where did our our bot go see that's the thing is he's not super reliable because he likes to wander off Like he's, he's way up here, so let's say tell him To follow us And when your bot follows you he he actually stays on your on your flank. Um, and it's it's kind of good and bad because here's the thing: if I point at him, he moves out of the way, so he's not in my line of fire, which is great. But the problem with that is that if I need to get up to him to give him a command, he keeps kind of walking away from me. So you have to. Um, what do we have to do? We have to hit F quickly. Looks like they might have improved that a little bit. It was really hard to catch him before. I, I think they slowed him down. I don't think he moves uh, quite as fast as he did before because it seemed like it was a little easier for me to catch him that time. But what we're going to do is we're going to kind of put him in the middle. Come on, buddy. He's badass looking, man. We're going to put him in the middle. Okay, so come over here. Okay, stop. Whoop. Stop. 
Yeah, he is easier to catch. He was really a pain in the butt to catch before. Okay, so I think if we tell him to stay, in theory, he's got one inventory. In theory, I mean, I don't know if that, if he'll still fire on monsters or not. There's only one way to find out. Let's go. Let's leave the area and come back and then see what he does. If he doesn't fire on them, then we're going to have to just let him pat. But the problem with him patrolling is that, like I said, he'll, um, sometimes he'll go far away from the base and then he's off down in the Tulis and he's not doing you any good, you know, kind of thing. These things should be able to climb hills a little bit better than they can since the actual crabs can scooch right up hills without any difficulty at all. Come on, Mank, you can do it. Okay, so we just have to get away from this region a little ways, and then if we come back, it should repop re new monsters. Yep, this is crap. Okay. So that blaster's going to town on him. Um, the bot doesn't seem to be doing anything. So my guess is we have to let him... Yeah, he's just watching. Okay, so we have to basically cancel stay, give him his head, and then he'll fight for us too. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you could keep the bot in, you know, in a general vicinity, then he would be great. He really would. But the problem is, like I said, he's going to wander off, and he might not be around when we actually need him. But these turrets are going to help a lot, too. Now, we have a parasite coming in. Let's see what the turret does. These turrets should blast this guy. Yep, look at that. Okay, cool. So, here again, you know, it's going to take the turrets a while to kill these guys, but the nice thing about it is they will kill him, and I don't got to mess with him. It's kind of fun to watch, too. <laughs> there, he finally killed him. So it takes a while, but they took, you know, they got the job done for me. And now I don't have to worry about it. So pretty cool. Pretty cool overall. Uh, the only thing I would like to see, particularly considering how expensive these things are, these are the most expensive turrets, and how expensive that guy is... Um, I would like to see them do a little bit more damage than they do. Uh, but otherwise, they're pretty useful. Oh, and then again, like I said, the other thing is, I wish that the bot, the security bots s stuck around. Like you could say, stay here, but defend, you know? But if you tell them to stay put, they don't do anything. It deactivates them completely. But he's going to wander way off over there, and then God only knows where he'll go <laughs> after that. So... Yeah, we're just going to let him do his thing. Now, another fun thing you can do is you could make, you know, three or four of these. And then they, they just, then just have them go with you. And they just follow you around and you basically have your own little, you know, um, little mini army, which is cool too. Um, so, anyway. All right, guys, that is it for this episode. We got a lot of stuff done today. I'm feeling really good about the base. Uh, how it's all nice and organized and everything. And, yeah, feeling really good. So... Uh, next episode, the plan's going to be, we, we still need to make the mech and we need to make the ground assault vehicle and we need to make the hover bike. So that's going to be probably the main goals of the next episode. And then after that, uh, we need, we need to get back up into space to go to Aziel and we need to, to build a space station. Those are kind of our major goals for, you know, for the remainder of this series. Okay. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.